For whatever reason, audio engineers love the sound of vintage analog gear. For me, running music or really any type of audio through analog gear just imparts some kind of character that you really, it's hard to describe, but it just sounds better than recording direct to a computer. And luckily, over the years, some plugins have come out that emulate that sound. One of those plugins emulates the sound of a tape machine. Not just any tape machine, two different type of tape machines with two classic tape reels that, you know, everybody wanted access to back in the day. And really it was just out of the budget range of most of us. But now, thanks to Slate Digital's Virtual Tape Machines plugin, we have that sound. And according to a lot of people's opinions, people who have um, better opinions than me because it's been a long time since I've recorded to reel to reel tape, you know, I have this here to prove that, hey, yeah, I've recorded the tape at some point, but um, it's been a long time. And the people who know better than me say that Slate Digital nailed the sound. And I just want to introduce this plugin to you if you've never heard of it. If you have, then um, this is my opinion about the way it sounds and what it does to audio. So let's get to it. So what do tape and tape machines do to audio that make it sound better? In two words, a lot. But to name a few specific things, compression, transient rounding off slash softening, harmonic distortion, well and flutter, which is related to volume and pitch dynamics, imperfect frequency balance, and even noise. These are some things that add to that tape character that to some people is just better. You know, think about the difference between a digital photo and film. Digital is technically superior, but it isn't necessarily aesthetically superior. In the same way, digital audio is superior on paper, but tape, to a lot of people, is orally superior. Unfortunately, tape and tape machines are expensive to buy and expensive to maintain. And that's where Slate Virtual Tape Machines comes in. At a cost of $199 at the time of this recording, we can get the sound of five-figure tape machines inside of our computers. So here's the plug-in. The tape machines are modeled off of a 2-inch Studer A827 that is in NRG Studios, which is a famous recording studio in Los Angeles, as well as mastering engineer Howie Weinberg's half-inch two-track Studer A80RC. When the machines were first released, the two-inch one cost $58,000 and the half-inch one was about $30,000. That's some very, very expensive gear. Studer tape machines were top of the line. All the big-name studios own one. They were pretty much as close to perfection that you could get when they came out. And what I like about Slate VTM is that they modeled a tape machine that had a 16-track headstock, which is the superior one to the 24-track headstock. And then we have our two different tape formulas. Over here we have the FG456, which is based on vintage Ampex 456 tape, which has a thick, warm, fluffy characteristic. It works really well on bass guitar, drums, and at taming vocals that are just harsh sounding. And then the other tape we have is the FG9, which is based on Quantigy GP9 tape. It's a cleaner sounding tape. It's high fidelity, but it kind of sounds stiff. Some people describe it as. I actually tend to use GP9 or FG9, I'm sorry. Uh, more. And then we also have tape speeds, 30 ips or inches per second, which is of course faster than 15. 15 has a, um, oh, let me, let me just say this. 30 inches per second has a flatter frequency response, especially in the high and low end. And there's also lower perceptible noise. So why would you want to use 15 inches per second? Well, number one, that's 
the sound that you normally hear when you think of tape. Most people couldn't afford to record at 30 inches per second. That's just a lot of tape stock being used. 15 inches per second is the sound of rock and roll. It's got a low end bump. It's got high end roll off, which is good for drum overheads that are just a little bit too irritating. Hi-hat mics especially. And it's also really, really good on bass and drums. On vocals, I prefer 30 inches per second, and that's kind of the cool thing with this plugin is that, you know, you're not limited to just one tape machine or to one way of tracking. I mean, if really, if you want to use the half inch machine, which has even more headroom than the two inch machine, while, you know, on every one of your tracks, you can go ahead and, you know, you'll retain the sound of tape, but have it sound cleaner than if you would have actually done it to tape, or should I say done it to 16 track tape. And actually that brings me to talking about the um, the half inch machine, which is usually what you use on the master channel because it just sounds clear. Again, it has a flatter frequency response and you can really just take that and put it on a mix that you've already done and it instantly sounds better. Crazy stuff, I know. I read a good deal about tape machines when I was preparing to make this video and one of the suggestions was to keep your levels under the negative 10 decibel range which is right here on the plugin and that will lend itself to a more open sound. Now when I set levels for drum overheads that's about where I'm at anyway because I've heard that you know, cymbals can sound really harsh because of the way that a tape machine has to be set up. For whatever reason, cymbals just get too harsh sounding. So I tend to use drum overheads and the hi-hat. And if I have a ride cymbal mic, I'll put that all around the negative 20 to negative 10 decibel range. Again, you know, the great thing about this is instead of you know, recording to a tape machine and then having to play it back in order to hear what it sounds like, we can instantly hear what this plugin sounds like as soon as you put it on. And so you just, you know, you just adjust accordingly. And if it starts sounding messy, you just back off. There's a few other options here. We have a bias setting, which it's kind of hard to explain. Basically, if you set it to high, the high frequencies saturate earlier, but if you set it to low, the high frequencies will saturate later. What I've found is that on vocals that are really, really sibilant, I like to have this set to high and it clamps down on that harshness a little bit more. I kind of like using this as a substitute for equalization. Just play around with it. If, you know, if worse comes to worse, just put it on normal so that you know you're not really screwing around with too much stuff, but I think it's a cool little setting to have. Over here we have a settings button, which will open up a menu with more options. And first of all, usually I have the noise reduction all the way down to negative 40 decibels. I don't really like noise in my productions. I mean, I have enough noise as it is using cheap gear. <laughs> I don't want to add any more. Uh, wow and flutter. Now here's, here's something interesting. Well, in Flutter, I, I said it earlier, it's a pitch and amplitude modulation. All that really means is that, you know, imagine the tape machine, and actually you don't have to imagine it, I can just play this for you. See the reels? And, you know, the tape's going along this track here. Here's the recording heads in here. Well, that's not a perfect pool from reel to reel. It's pretty close, but there's going to be minor speed variations and that affects pitch and volume or amplitude. That's what wow and flutter is. With digital recordings, we don't have that issue. There, there really is virtually no wow and flutter in digital gear because there's no tape being pulled. The, the tape is data. And if you have any well and flutter issues, then you have a really, really bad sound card. Um, not only is it really, really bad, it's probably broken. That's actually what's great about this plugin is that, you know, you can get a digital recording that is perfect and yet sounds sterile 
but then you start adding these plugins that simulate analog gear because, you know, you're supposed to record off of a clean signal to begin with. So, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because the gear that I've bought throughout the years has always had clean sounding, you know, stages. My preamp is a clean sound. Actually, all my preamps, with the exception of the old crappy Behringer mixes, mixers that I own, have a clean sound to them. You know, that's their characteristic. Some preamps tend to have a, um, a characteristic that isn't clean, but mine are supposed to be flat. And flat is not always good. You know, it can be boring. And these types of plugins add to that, or I should say take away from that boringness. Okay, finally, going back to the settings menu, we have a few other options. Um, I tend to have Hiss Auto Mute off because I think it's still a little bit buggy. They never really um, fixed the way that works. I think it works on a gate, and I don't like to have any noise gates on my tracks. So I just have Hiss Auto Mute off. You know, my noise reduction's at negative 40 anyway, so we're good on that. Wow and Flutter, to simulate this, a 25% setting is like an OCD level of calibration. You calibrate the tape machine every single day, which is not how most people treat their gear. If you want to get it to the point where the well and flutter equals a typical tape machine, then set this to 50%. I usually have it on the default. I mean, you can experiment and you can, you can even put it to 100%. And it gets a little wacky, but not too bad. It's a very, very subtle wow and flutter setting. And um, I definitely recommend screwing around with it. I believe it's a global setting. I might be wrong. But uh, meaning that if you set this to 30% on here, then any other plugin within this project will be 30%. Base alignment. This usually comes in handy when you have your half inch tape machine on unfortunately this is a global setting i believe in a future update they're going to change that because a lot of people have been requesting it um but you know i would say just set it based on whatever you're hearing on your master track or do what i normally do i wait until the mastering stage to quote unquote record to tape that's pretty much the whole plugin. I'm gonna show you how to quickly set this up. This is based on the manual and on how I work. So we have our three tracks plus our master track. Three tracks here, master track over here. And I'm gonna hit settings. Actually, I should have cut that open. I'll hit settings again. And my plugin it was right now is on the global setting of negative 15 decibels. What I'm gonna do is keep that there for now and change this setting right here where it says ungrouped. I'm going to click that and change this to group one. And then I'm going to come over here and see where this little um, chain link thing is. If you look down over, if you look down here, it's a little um, window tip. It says click to isolate the gain section from group. I like to have that disabled by default. And then what I'm going to do is have this set to the two inch machine, normal bias, 15 inches per second, and FG9, 16 track. And then what I'm gonna do is drag and drop this plugin to the other tracks. Okay, finally, I'm going to get, this is my master channel. I'm going to ungroup this and change it to 30 inches per second and half inch. And we're still not done. I'm not going to show you this next step. I'll tell you what it is. But basically the idea is that you set your input so that it's hitting around zero decibels with the exception of drum overheads and other harsh high frequency instruments. And again, play with the other settings. Now, if you have it grouped, don't screw around with the bias too much. Ungroup it at that point and then mess with it there. Keep in this group setting 
It also just allows you to quickly switch between the different tape types and machine types. And what I also like about this plugin is see how when I'm changing the input, the output knob is doing the opposite. That's pretty cool. So, oh, and if you don't like the way, if you don't like these reels moving, <laughs> you can just click them and they stop. And also, if you want to bypass the plugin at any point, you just go over here and hit bypass. And the, you know, the VU meter light goes off so that you know it's not working. Good stuff. I love this plugin. I, I pretty much have it on all my mixes just because it adds life to an otherwise sterile mix. Um, the compression, the reduction of harshness, and the cohesion it adds to the mixes. You know, I bought this plugin back when it was 250 or whatever the price was, and, and you know, it's worth more than that because, God, just for a, a, a real, real tape, <laughs> I think it's more money than that. So um, I highly recommend this plugin, and other people who are more familiar with tape than I am, like I said before, have said that this plugin is authentic. It gives that vibe. A few people have said that they've sold their tape machines or they don't use them anymore now that this plugin's out. I think that says a lot. And for 200 bucks, it's hard to beat. It really, really is. Um, so that's, that's about it. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.